Hi everyone, I'm Rena Goncharenko, a realtor in Florida, and today I'm going to give you a tour of Fort Lauderdale, the yacht capital of the world. Often called the Venice of America, Fort Lauderdale has 165 miles of inland waterways across the city. The waterways create unique neighborhoods with many peninsulas and 36 islands. This unique attribute made it a boating haven, attracting yacht lovers from around the world. There are over 50,000 registered yachts and with such close proximity to the Bahamas and Caribbeans, it's also a popular yachting vacation stop. Fort Lauderdale is home to a multi-billion dollar marine industry. It's a major manufacturing and maintenance center for yachts and it annually hosts the world's largest boat show. You can often spot mega yachts throughout the canals. We will start our tour downtown. Fort Lauderdale is located 30 miles north of downtown Miami. Downtown has a beautiful skyline with a mix of residential and business buildings. Majority of the high rises are newer with many new buildings in progress. The most iconic part of downtown is Las Olas Boulevard. It's two and a half miles long and full of great restaurants, bistros, cafes, boutiques, art galleries, and everything in between. The area is full of life year round, and it is a great spot for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Here is a highlight tour that will give you a good sense of what the boulevard has to offer. Through the middle of downtown, parallel to Las Olas Boulevard, flows the New River. Along the river, we have a river walk, connecting us to different parks, recreation, and different eateries, like the wharf. 
The Wharf is also an event space and hosts many events and a weekly game night. The Riverwalk is a great place to stroll while enjoying many yachts passing by. East of downtown is Victoria Park, an upscale residential neighborhood with a mix of older and newer homes. This area retains old Florida charm and runs north of Las Olas Boulevard. Further east brings us to many different waterfront neighborhoods. This area has the most expensive and prime real estate in Fort Lauderdale, perfectly situated between downtown and the beach. Las Olas Boulevard comes to an end at the beach. The Oceanside Park hosts different events like the farmer's market, concerts, fitness events, and movie nights. State Road A1A is the main road on the island. The island is relatively narrow and about 12 miles long. It's made up of different neighborhoods and towns. This area has a very unique shoreline with a three mile long sidewalk running along the beach. The sidewalk is decorated with the signature wavy white wall. This is one of the prettiest stretches of coastline and it's very popular for biking, rollerblading and jogging along the beach. The area is beautifully decorated with palm trees that set the tone for this amazing environment. South of Oceanside Park, we have a few hotels and on the intercoastal is the aquatic center with three pools next to the future International Swimming Hall of Fame. Further south is the location of the International Boat Show. The remaining one and a half miles of the island have some hotels and condominiums along the beach. Along the intercoastal, we have the Harbor Beach Island neighborhood. Further south is Port Everglades, an international trade and cruise port. The area around is very industrial with the Fort Lauderdale Airport in the distance. South is Hollywood Beach and further is Sunny Isles Beach. Something unique to Fort Lauderdale is seeing the anchored cargo ships out in the water. This has been the case ever since I can remember. The Fort Lauderdale Beach Park has different areas with picnic tables, playgrounds, basketball, and volleyball courts, making it a very accommodating beach. This area has a high concentration of high-end hotels, and there are over 30 restaurants. Here is a quick glimpse of a few.
architecture is also very unique like the Ritz-Carlton, capturing the amazing views all along the shoreline. North of the Ritz-Carlton is Central Beach. This area has a mix of hotels and residences. Many older buildings are slowly being replaced by luxury hotels and residents. The north side of Central Beach has a great contrast to all the developments. It is home to the Bonnet House and Gardens Museum, a historic artist estate where we can enjoy tropical tranquility. Central Beach is the place to be inspired by the sunrises and left in awe by the dramatic sunsets. Central Beach comes to an end at Sunrise Boulevard, which is the third access point to the island. On the other side of the boulevard is Hugh Taylor Birch State Park, which is Fort Lauderdale's Central Park. 180 acres of pure recreation and relaxation. North of the park, on the intercoastal, we have a residential community of Dolphin Isles, with small canals throughout. On the beach, we have 31-story palm towers that have been decorating the shoreline for 22 years. Next to it are newer modern residents, and these two are the dominant towers in this area, right on the beach. This is the end of the three-mile beachfront sidewalk, and the area is a lot more residential. Further north is another residential community of Lauderdale Beach. This is the first area where we see homes on the shore. As we continue north, we run into the fourth entry point to the island, which brings us to Galt Ocean Mile. It's a mile long stretch of condominiums along the shore. In the middle along A1A, we have many restaurants and shops. Further north is Lauderdale by the sea. We don't have any high rises and the area is full of apartments, homes, small hotels, restaurants and condominiums. It's a very vibrant area.
North of Lauderdale by the sea, we run into Pompano Beach. Pompano Beach is a city between Fort Lauderdale and Boca Raton. It doesn't have a traditional downtown. The area by the family fishing pier has been undergoing a transformation and is becoming a city center and gathering place for residents and guests. Throughout the coast, we have great restaurants on the water where you can soak in the ocean and water views while enjoying delicious food. Two and a half miles north of the pier is the Hillsborough Inlet, which is decorated with the historic Hillsborough Inlet Lighthouse. It's a gorgeous setting with beautiful water and a major access point out into the ocean for many boats and yachts. North of the inlet is Hillsborough Beach, and further north, Boca Raton. Back to Sunrise Boulevard. On the mainland, we have the Galleria of Fort Lauderdale. A sophisticated two-story shopping mall with restaurants. Behind the mall is the Peninsula neighborhood, Sunrise Intercoastal. Downtown in Las Olas is only two and a half miles away, making it very central. On the intercoastal, we have some taller condominiums right across Central Beach. On the north side of the boulevard is the public shopping plaza and more restaurants near luxury apartments. Behind the apartments is a large neighborhood of Coral Ridge. The Coral Ridge Yacht Club has been catering to the area for 75 years. This part of the intercoastal is very quiet as it sits against the Hugh Taylor Birch State Park. There are many restaurants and marinas along the intercoastal. It is also lined with beautiful homes on both sides. Further north, we run into the Coral Ridge Country Club, the only country club within the city limits of Fort Lauderdale. The neighborhood surrounding it is very quiet and the intercoastal is full of canals. Further north is another luxury community of Bay Colony. It is one of the most private in the city. North of the Bay Colony, the area transitions into Pompano Beach. There are also many canals throughout, all along the intercoastal up until the Hillsborough Inlet. There are many other cities and communities inland. One of the bigger ones is Coral Springs. Over 130,000 people call it home and it sits right against the Everglades. Thank you for watching and I hope this gave you a really good idea of what Fort Lauderdale has to offer. 
If you would like my help with any of your real estate needs, my contact information will be down in the description below.